So if you've been looking for a filter for your aquarium, well, in this video, we're going to be going over a 4 out of 5 rated canister filter on Amazon from the company Marineland. So stay tuned to check it out. Welcome back guys, I'm Ho Sway from Ho Sway's Exotics and on this channel I like to make informational videos about my reptiles and sometimes that includes product review videos like this video today. So jumping into today's video, I'm doing an aquarium build for a reptile that I'm getting in the future and I actually needed a filter because this is a semi-aquatic species. While doing some research, I came across two companies that seem to be controlling the majority of the market in your aquatic filtration systems. And those companies are going to be Fluval and the other one being Marineland. So I decided to go with the Marineland MagnaFlow 160 canister filter. The reason that I chose this particular canister filter is at the time of this video, this is actually on sale on Amazon for $74.88, which it normally sells around 93 to about a hundred bucks on Amazon. So this is a little bit of a deal. Another reason why I decided to go with this filter is with this being a more mainstream filter, there's going to be a lot of parts readily available and more locations than just online. The Marineland MagnaFlow 160 canister filter can filter up to 160 gallons of water per hour and is rated up to a 30 gallon aquarium. So I checked on the Fluval company to see if they had something similar to the actual MagnaFlow 160 and they seem to have something somewhat comparable. They have two options being a 107 and a 207 gallon per hour canister filter. With those two particular filters coming in at around $119.99 and $139.99 respectively. So obviously you can see why I would choose the MagnaFlow 160. But going more into this marine land canister filter, this filter offers water polishing with a water polishing pad that helps to improve your water clarity and also helps to remove your finer particles and debris. This filter also offers biological filtration in the form of bio balls. Uh, bio balls are little small balls that has a lot of different ridges and things cut into them to provide a lot of surface area for the growth of beneficial bacteria to help with the nitrate and the ammonia cycling in the water. The MagnaFlow 160 also offers chemical filtration using activated carbon as a source of filtration to get rid of odors, discoloration, and other things in the water. And last but not least, this filter also offers mechanical filtration in the form of pads at the very base of it to help get out your larger particles and debris as well. The only downside to this particular filter, and you'll definitely hear me talk about this in the setup portion of the video, is the priming system. I did have an issue getting that thing primed up and getting it ready, but after I got all that settled and squared away, it runs perfectly fine and does a great job doing the filtering. And also the plastic pieces that the canister filter comes with for the hookups and stuff could be made out of a little bit better material considering the price range and how much they put into this thing. As a quick tip, all the products mentioned in today's video will have links down in the description so that way you guys can go pick you up one and choose the one that you like for yourself. Also, if you have a canister filter already, or if you're thinking about getting one of these mentioned in today's video, tell me down in the comments which one you have or which one you're thinking about getting, so that way I can add these into a future video. Of course, there are other alternatives to canister filters that you can choose from. There's DIY options, and there's other off-brands that you can get that work just the same, if not better, and have better options than what these two can offer. Just like our third runner-up on Amazon, the Amoza Joy Canister Filter. This particular canister filter is coming in at around $79.99 and it actually has a $12 off coupon at the time of this video uh, so that way you can save a little extra money on it. And this canister filter comes in a variety of sizes from 172 gallons per hour all the way up to 660 gallons per hour. And something about this canister filter that stands out to me is the fact that it offers UV sterilization. If you don't know, UV filtration is great for removing green coloration in your water, killing algae, and getting rid of light sensitive bacteria. So definitely check out the Moza Joy canister filter if you want something a little bit different and don't want to spend quite as much on one of the more expensive options. So we're done talking about filters guys, let's get to setting this thing up. 
all right so let's go ahead and get started with this unboxing video and i will give you guys a update on this video coming up soon so that way i can tell you how i like this actual canister filter in particular and if we get a different one for my particular setup i'm using it for now so let's go ahead and get this out so as you can see here, bring it up a little bit closer for you guys. Boom. So boom. First time unboxing this, uh, as you can see, it's still in the wrapper. We got our, here we go. We got our parts diagram and identification, replacement is parts list. Uh, we're going to keep this, put this off to the side, make sure we don't lose this in case we need to replace anything on our canister filter here. Um, let's see. Uh -oh. All right, so we got some, some O-rings here. I'm guessing this is for the lid for the canister filter. We're going to put this off to the side. And let's see, we got our box here. Let's go ahead and open this up. Let's see, let me grab a knife. Uh, I have a knife. Right. Yeah. So let's pop this guy open. Turn it this way. All right. So in here, it looks like we have our we got two o-rings obviously we got some tubing for the inlets and outlets for the water uh, we got a lot of different accessories for the tubes uh, this looks like the top of it here and this is another one here i will say the quality on this is not the best quality, feels a little bit on the cheap side, but it'll totally do, and it's sturdy enough to work, so the tubing actually is probably one of the better ones on this, this is actually really thick tubing, and this stuff is actually kind of expensive, uh, let's see, let's open this guy up, let's see, okay, we got our hose attachments here, and this goes down, up, different levels, okay, cool, that looks good. This is, this piece is actually some pretty decent quality, as far as material was. Uh, let's see, let's open this up. So, let's see, this is probably one of the ones for the outlet one. Same uh, material as the actual other piece that you've seen in there. Just gonna check out some of those clips. Yeah, so all this is pretty decent stuff. Looks like we got our instructions here. And we got a big instruction list, quick setup guide. And we'll go over this and we'll get all this stuff together. So I'll set that off to the side so we can keep on going with all the stuff we got in here. Uh, it says for optimum performance that we need to clean the filter media regularly, rinse with water from the aquarium, not tap water. Uh, rinse filter foam every three weeks and replace after nine weeks. Clean impeller assembly, cover and impeller monthly, rinse thoroughly under warm water or tap water, replace filter floss pad and carbon filter bags every month. So this one is the model 160, but this has probably worked for the 220 and the 360. Hmm. Okay, so it's the same thing. This in other languages. So this is more replacement parts list as well. So I would definitely recommend saving this in case you need to replace anything because this stuff is pretty readily available on Amazon. 
So if you want to pick one up, I'll definitely have a link down in the description because I would probably recommend this thing for a lot of people. I watched a lot of good reviews on this. So that's why I'm doing a review on it to see if it hold up to what I'm doing here. So let me grab my knife. That'll make this a whole lot easier. Get this guy out of here. So... Get our box out of the way. Boom. We have our canister filter. So I believe all the material and stuff is already inside of there. So I'm just going to get this bubble wrap off of this cord here. Get this unraveled. Let's see. Boom. All right. So we got our prime right here. And then I believe this guy should unlatch. Oh, I didn't, I didn't pull them up all the way. I didn't realize they pop open. All right. Cool. So. Inside of here, I believe we have our impeller, which it said that it needs to be cleaned out. So, got that in there. Cool. Locks in. Good. We're going to move this out the way. That's the top unit. So, down here, we should have our baskets. We got one screen here. And up under the screen, we have this guy, which has a little pull-up tab on it, so you can pull it up and hold it. So we got a filter media here. And then we have our bio balls, which these are to help in, uh, grow positive bacteria inside of the actual filter itself so that way it can biologically filter out some of the nitrates and other buildups from the waste material from the actual ammo that you got inside of your aquarium or whatever you're using it for but these are really really good to have they build up really good bacteria so keep those off to the side basket there once again that pull up tab these should be the charcoal tablets or charcoal I believe that they have for activated for the actual for the actual filtration part itself the carbon acts as a real good filtration system just for getting out pollutants and other things like that and cleaning it up water and then boom we have our thicker sponge material here down here coarse filter and it's pretty much it that's the only thing that's down here at the bottom so I'm gonna go ahead Get that in there. Put that back down at the bottom. And then we'll be right back. All right. So I'm um, looking here. Uh, this is start here. Canister filters quick setup guide. So obviously step one, uh, we just got done inspecting everything. So you have your 160, which is the one that I have. And you have your 220s and 360s here. And you have your setup for uh, the hosing material and stuff inside of there. And then we'll keep going with the rest of this. So over here, step two, uh, which we did, we unlocked and removed the motor head. And it says to B, unwrap all media and rinse thoroughly. So place the media in appropriate filter trays and load the filled trays and secured plate. So here, let me go and give you guys a little closer look. So here at the very bottom, we have our coarse filter uh, and on top of that is going to be the bags of charcoal so i want to take those out put those in there and then we got our bio balls right above that with our actual other filter at the top i forgot the filter floss pad i believe that's what it is and it's securing plate for the very top of it so it says make sure we unwrap and rinse everything so let me go do that real quick and we'll be right back with you guys 
All right, so now that we got all our stuff rinsed out real good, we're gonna go ahead and start placing all our stuff in here. So like I said, at the very bottom, we got our coarse filter. Then the next one, we got a carbon layer, uh, which is the one that I have here. So let's put that there. And then above that is the filter with the bio ball. So we're gonna put that in there. Let's see. Alright, cool. And then there we go. Got our plate in right there. That's the locking plate. Alright, so go back to this. Let's move it on. We're gonna move on to part number D here. It says replace motor uh motorhead closed locking buckles note align intake nozzle and connector pipe so that goes there to that there ceiling gasket intake nozzle locking buckle connector pipe each each valve block to motorhead the inlet will be on the right and the outlet on the left to lock the valve block turn the key clockwise and reverse the lock and that's talking about the top of the actual motor head so let me go ahead and put that together there let's see right, so like it said we're going to line like it said we're going to align this hole with the hole that we have right here, I'm assuming. Oh, this is, depending on how you want to look at it, it's no big deal. Actually, I want to turn it so the way it faces that way. I'm bougie, it'd be all right. So, let's take all this out. that way that, that way that there there we go boom so that'll work for me so we got that there now let's see what else we got here Go ahead and close our locking buckles here, here, here. Uh -oh. All right, boom. Got everything locked on down. Now, next thing, so we do got these O rings we got to pay attention to. I'm glad we see that now. So, and that's what it said. Uh, so basically what it's saying on part E is at the very bottom of this base here, this notch, if I can get the focus for a second, this notch here has to line with these notches on the actual pump down here itself or you can actually seat this down in there. So we got that done. We got it rotated sideways. And this should slide right in place. Turn down. Good there. All right, so we're done with step number two. Step number three says placement, place canvas filter, 
canister filter under aquarium in an accessible location. Topic of canister must be below aquarium water level. Easy. I have a sp already a spot for it with holes so I can run the tubing. And it says make sure the distance from the bottom of the filter and top of the aquarium falls within these ranges. 20 to 60 inches. Cool. Do not plug in. So we'll, we'll place all that, but we're going to keep on going. We'll move on to the next one. <coughs> All right, so uh, we're just gonna move on to the next one. We'll do all the placement and stuff later. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and assemble the intake tube and the outlet tube. So these are the tubes we seen earlier uh, that was in the packaging. Uh, we're gonna go ahead and assemble those, get those ready. Let's see what we got here. So for one is here, we got this part already. This doesn't really look like it need anything, but the actual uh, suction cup needs a suction cup on it. So let's see what we got here. So we'll go ahead and attach our suction cup here. Boom. So this should be good to go. Then we'll go ahead and put this other piece, like it says in these two suction cups. And we need to put the bottom on it. So we got this. This should go here, I believe. Boom. And then inlet tube. Two suction cups. Clamps. And you got your suction cups clamps. They uh, just pop into the side here. Easy enough. Boom. Got those two. And boom. We'll pop these on. And we're good there. Alright, so let's check over this, make sure we're not missing anything else. And uh, see attached vinyl tubing ends to valve hose. Tighten hose nuts. Please make sure you have pushed the vinyl tubing down to the hose bar as far as possible to make sure the hose nuts tighten properly. So let's go ahead and get these two hoses undone. So is make sure that we push this down all the way. Make sure that is not too bad. Alright, that's one. And we got our other hose right yonder. Press too hard, and you don't got that gorilla grip. <clears throat> All right, cool. So we got our hoses attached now. We should be ready to go move along into putting this on the actual aquarium itself. So we'll see you guys in just a second. Let me go transfer everything to the room. <laughs> 